This video is intended as a dress rehearsal for something that I'm doing elsewhere later. So I'm going to use this video to try and organize my thoughts about this product. It is the Shit Erd CD Transport. This episode is brought to you by Blue Sound, makers of the Node X network streamer. Click the link in the show notes for more information. Welcome back everybody. Yes, on eBay, no it wasn't eBay, it was Discogs. I just bought Spiritualized this three CD single set from the 90s, Let It Flow with a bunch of, yeah, three CDs with a bunch of live tracks on here which are not available, I don't think, on streaming services. I also bought Pale Saints' In Ribbons, is it called In Ribbons? It's a 4AD release. This is just about to get remastered which is why I bought this one now because when they remaster it, they're gonna stuff it up, they're gonna make it too loud, as they did with Pale Saints' first album when they remastered that a couple of years ago. And then lastly, from this year, a new DJ mix from the Future Sound of London called My Maps. I think this came out, oh no, this is not from this year, this came out three or four years ago, this is volume one. Volume four, I also bought this year, but this went on sale on the same day, they restocked it. So this is only, I believe, only available via CD from the Future Sound of London's Bandcamp. So obviously, to play all of these CD releases, just put this spiritualized back in its slipcase, to play all of these, I need a CD player. Now this CD transport sells for 1300 US dollars and it's called a transport because there's no DAC inside and you can see there's no DAC inside because there are no analog outputs on the back panel. There are just digital outputs and inputs, we'll come to those later, but if we just focus on the more traditional digital outputs that we see on the back of most CD transports and players, we get a spit of coax and an AES EBU digital output. So I've got it plugged in. And I'm doing this to show you, is it turned on? No, it's not turned on, I haven't plugged it in. <laughs> so yeah, now it's powered on and I can open it using the stop button, which is kind of one of the little niggles I have about this transport is the stop button is also the open close. If I hold this for a couple of seconds, it opens like this. Fluke's groovy feeling is already in there. Now I wanna show you this because this is the, the drawer and I think it's a little bit flimsy. And I also think it's the same draw mechanism that's used in the Cambridge Audio Evo that I reviewed in Portugal a couple of months ago. Now, CD mechanisms are hard to come by. There aren't many manufacturers now making them, which is probably why shit have gone for this one. It's probably the best one that they can get for the money for this particular type of player without making their own, and they're never gonna do that. So yeah, I mean, it opens kind of nicely, but, Right, is it going to open? Yeah. Yeah, it just, it just feels a little bit flimsy. So obviously we need to connect the Erd to an external DAC and then play that DAC out into a hi-fi system. I've been using the hi-fi system that you see behind me, so the KEF R3 Meta that we reviewed last week, powered by an NAD M23 amp, PS Audio preamp. The DAC I use, well, it's actually over here. I've been using the Logitech Transporter as the DAC because you can use that as an external DAC as well. Sounds pretty damn good. I've been using that because it has balanced outputs, balanced analog outputs, because I've got a long run going to my hi-fi system behind me here. Now, here comes the wrinkle. In that, here we have a Rotel CD11 Tribute, which I believe was modified and tuned by the late Ken Ishiwata. Now this is a CD transport and player. So you can see the analog outputs here. So this has a DAC inside as well as having a single digital output in terms of coax, there's no Toslink here, there's no Toslink on the Erd. Now in terms of just digital transports going into the transporter, I can't really peg a difference between the two, they sound the same to me as digital transports. And yet this has the DAC inside, 
Let me plug this one in because this draw mechanism is different. I don't often do this, do I? Like waving something around in front of the camera. So we do this, open there. Let's close that again. Open it again. I think that CD draw mechanism is a little bit nicer. It's a bit plastic and flimsy, but it just it seems to kind of go in a bit more, yeah, a bit more smoothly. And the, the control buttons on the front are larger than on the shit. Not that I have any real problem with the, the shit's smaller buttons. And I really like the kind of smaller display on the front of the shit. I know originally they were experimenting with some sort of e-ink, but apparently the refresh rate was too slow to be used to get the seconds to change properly. So they've gone with something that looks kind of like that. Whereas you can see that the, the Rotel is a bit, a bit more lit up. But yeah, if this sounds the same as the shit and this sells for half the money, why would you buy the shit and not just stick with something like this? I mean, Marantz make affordable CD player transports for like 600 bucks, as do Denon, as does, I think Cambridge Audio do, but maybe theirs is just a transport, but I'm pretty sure that's only 500 bucks. So why would you go with the shit erd and not something more affordable and potentially just as robust. Before I answer that question, let's also look at the remote controls. This is the shit's remote control. This is the Rotel's. I much prefer the shit because I like, I just like smaller remotes. I hate these big honking great <laughs> plastic remote controls that, you know, would possibly work with an amplifier as well or some other products. Don't love this. Don't mind this. Okay, so let's go back to the Erd and let's consider the USB sockets on the back that I said we would be coming back to later because here we are. So first of all, we have two USB-C inputs. Now these are Shit's own Unison USB inputs. That means they're not an XMOS or a C Media. Shit have designed this input themselves or rather Mike Moffat of Shit has designed those himself. We'll come back to why those are useful in a moment. But also, I think in an almost world first, this is almost the world's first CD transport to have a USB output. Shanling put one out, I think, a couple of months ago, but it doesn't have shit's unison USB output. So we can connect this to a USB DAC or any DAC's USB input. Well, I say any DAC. It's not any DAC. It's any, I think, USB audio class 2 DAC. So it needs to be sort of like the later generation DACs. So I tried this with a Lingdorf TDAI3400, its USB input, and it didn't work. Like this couldn't talk to that. And I think I tried it on AudioQuest Dragonfly, and I don't think that worked, but that was many, many weeks ago. And I think I did, I could be misremembering it. I don't know, as you can tell, this video is a little bit looser than my usual speed. But one USB DAC I have been using is a little bit silly, actually. It's almost a bit preposterous. It's a dongle DAC from FIO called the KA2. And I've used this with my Android smartphone as well. And it has a 4.4 Pentacon balanced output socket. So yeah, that gives me balanced out into the headphones that I use with my phone if I want them to. But also if I want to hook this into my hi-fi system along here, I need a 4.4 connector. Now here I'm using, I bought this from Amazon, this is iFi's adapter cable. This wasn't cheap actually, I think this was over 100 bucks. So 4.4 Pentacon to normal XLR connectors here, then these connect to your standard XLR balance cable. In my case, it goes from there all the way along the side of the room here into the hi-fi system there. So essentially, this 4.4 millimeter connector goes into my dongle DAC, and then the dongle DAC goes into my ERD. And then it plays out like that. So the dongle DAC is doing the decoding. And it sounds pretty damn good. I wasn't dissatisfied at all in my testing. And I don't think it's that far away 
from the internal DAC inside the Rotel box that I have in front of me here as well. So you'd probably be hard pressed to split them. Maybe the Fio DAC is a little bit thinner and a little bit spikier with detail retrieval, whereas maybe the Rotel is a bit fuller sounding but lacks that last ounce of specificity that this balanced outputting DAC has. But I'm splitting hairs with that. But the other reason that you would buy a shit erd is to make use of these USB inputs because to these you can connect a network streamer or a computer or a Pi or anything with a USB output and then use it as a USB hub. So these would feed into here and then come out of whichever digital output that you'd chosen to use. So in my case, if I'd chosen to use this dongle DAC here, then everything would come out of this and there are switches on the front to tell the erd which output you want to fire out of and also which input to use. So whether it's the disc or one of these two Unison USB inputs. Now why that's useful? Well, it might be that you only have a USB DAC. So it's Hobson's choice. So you have to use this output here, which means you don't have to keep flipping your USB DAC. Let's say this is my own USB DAC. Don't have to keep flipping this between the ERD and my network streamer. Say, so let's say I've got a Raspberry Pi USB outputting of that. I don't have to keep moving this backwards and forwards. I can connect the Pi to there, this to here. But it's also useful in the case of people. And I do hear people say this. They say things like, I definitely prefer the coax input on my DAC above all others in terms of sound quality or the AES EBU. So that means we could go USB into here, we could have a, a disc in here, and then we could fire out of the AES EBU into our DAC, so into our favorite input on our DAC, and always be using that. So effectively our Pi's USB output would be converted in the middle here to AES EBU, A, I can't even say it, AES EBU out here to our DAC. So this is a bit of an odd duck, isn't it? Because it's functionally very versatile. It is, yeah, almost a world first. I think this possibly won't be the last time that we see a unison USB output on a shit product. I mean, I think it's great, even just as a proof of concept. And it's not insane money. We're not talking like five grand for this thing. Even though I think if you do just want a CD player with a spit of output and you want that for the most affordable price, then the ERD isn't it. You want something like the Rotel CD11 Tribute or any other kind of CD transport, really. This is for somebody who wants to use the USB hub features here, the USB output here, or route all of their USB hub stuff through one of these three outputs. So those are my thoughts on the shit erd CD transport plus USB hub. And I think I have them pretty well sorted for where those thoughts are gonna end up next, although I don't know quite when that will appear online. I don't really know at this stage where this video is gonna show up. It might be Patreon only, but if you're watching it on YouTube right now, then clearly I decided against it being Patreon only. And so yeah, if you enjoyed this video, then please consider giving us a like down below. If you like my attitude to more spontaneous, looser, less kind of slick videos, then please consider subscribing to this channel. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching.